It's hot here, I'm sweating out, and we're in one of this country's 18,000 islands, the ninth largest city in the world. With a population of over 250 million people, it makes this country the fourth most densely populated country on earth. Do they play rugby? Yes, sir. Played in 14 different provinces, and the first club dating back to 1983, it's Indonesia, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to the Jakarta Tens. Whoa! Guys and girls, welcome back to the Rugby Asia channel. Pull up a chair, get comfy, maybe pour yourself a nice cold drink, because you're in the more than capable hands of your favorite host, Ed Rolston, aka the Money Man, aka the Volcano, aka the Bals, aka Dr. Twerk. But before we get into it, let me hit you with some knowledge. We've got 22 teams from four different countries split up into four pools. It's a one day tournament, and we'll finish up with a cup final, a plate final, a bowl final, and a shield final. Stay tuned, we've got plenty to come. Boom. Welcome back. I'm here with the big man of the tournament, the Don, the Godfather, Thank Gareth Ray. So talk to me about this tournament. How long has the, the Jakarta Tens been going on for? Um, it's a bit loose. I think, uh, I think it's been going for about 20 years. We haven't got any exact details within the club. Yeah. Uh, the club's had a few transition periods. We used to be known as the Iski Komodos and we ran out of a different club. Then we moved set up uh, to the British school uh, and then two years ago we came down here. So a lot of stuff's been, been lost in the moves. Um, but certainly down here, uh, this is our second year, um, and it's sort of just going from strength to strength, uh, I guess, as rugby develops out here. So my knowledge of Indonesian and Jakartan rugby is pretty limited. Yep. Do you want to talk me through how the whole setup is? And yeah, um, Indonesian rugby is still very much in its infancy. Um, the game's played across 14 different uh, provinces. Um, there's probably 13 to 14 clubs within Indonesia. Um, in Jakarta, we have five. So it sort of limits the amount of rugby we can play. Certainly the guys that are uh, in different islands like Sumatra, Sulawesi and also in Papua, um, there's not a lot of rugby for them to play. So without these competitions, you know, the, the, the interest just sort of dies a bit. So having this competition and also the Bali one in October um, just gets everyone excited and it gets everyone something to play towards. How do the locals take to rugby over here? Um, it's, it's difficult, you know, football is a mad, mad sport here. So it's very difficult for us to challenge that. Um, a lot of work is being done behind the scenes to try and develop the game, but it's still very much in its infancy. Uh, a lot of great work's been done by our club in the junior rugby section. Uh, and then uh, there's a lot of work behind the scenes being done by Prui, which is the Indonesian Rugby Union. Um, trying to develop sort of grassroots and get into the schools, etc. So still very early days, but let's hope in 10, 15 years. I mean, 140 plus million, you've got to, you've got to go right somewhere. There's got to be someone in there. So you mentioned earlier off camera that uh, you're not actually a rugby player yourself. You, you, you kick a silly ball around. Is that correct? I'm too small. Uh, although uh, I'm trying to uh, go to the gym, I'm trying to. I want to maybe next year. My my plan is to play for the Komodos. That's my uh, my goal. And I actually I'm very I'm very quick. Uh, you might know Gareth Ray. He's one of the the captains of the Komodos. I'm actually a lot quicker than him in in terms of speed. So I'm pitch side with Sarah O'Grady from Crown Relocations. Sarah, how long have Crown been sponsoring this event? Um, Crown have been sponsoring the Jakarta Komodos for over a decade and we've been sponsoring this event for the same amount of time. We sponsor the guys, um, we also sponsor them their tents and we transport all their goods as well and we have the bouncy castle for the kids. For the kids? I saw Gareth on it earlier. <laughs> How long have you been playing rugby for? Um, actually we're playing rugby starting on 2012. Oh. It's only new. So a couple of years, same as you? Yeah, same. Do you enjoy it? Yes, sure. What, posi what positions do you play? Uh, I'm uh, forward. Oh, nice. And you? Me too. Oh, both forwards. Yes. Ah, nice. So, so you come down here, is this your local club? Uh, no, we're actually, uh, we have our practice in GIS. Actually, yep. it's in South Jakarta and we're coming only for like, we have to play. Cool, cool. So how many games have you played today so far? Uh, two, two, two games. And did you win? Our team win. And your team? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> so what are you guys going to improve on next time? 
They should. What do you need to improve? Uh, maybe uh, run fast. Yeah. And then, what? Um, communication with each other. Good stuff. So you're going to go home and do your sprints tonight, right? Ah, good stuff. <laughs> well, enjoy yourself. Thank you very much for speaking to me, guys. Pleasure. That's it. Whoa! Kyle's just requested to be on my right because this is apparently his better side. See that? Look at that jawline. What percentage of the kids that you guys have are local kids? Oh, I mean, this is a huge coup for us because it's traditionally been an expatriate program. This year we have a 60% Indonesian or half Indonesian, mixed Indonesian blood uh, uh, children. Um, um, what do we call it, population, if you will, demographic. And so it's been, uh, for us, it's a selling point. We're going to our sponsors, we're going to schools, and they're saying, wow, you guys are really engaging the local community. This next season, we're gonna do an outreach program where we're gonna sponsor 40 kids to come, excuse me, sorry, 20 kids to come into the program, and we'll do another 20 kids sponsored by an, an outside sponsor. So total, 40 local children from small schools that can't afford any of our uh, kit or whatever, uh, and it's gonna be paid for by these sponsors and by our own program. And when it comes down to the playing ability of these kids, how do the locals take yeah, to it? Look, honestly, uh, to, to be fair, even even our Indonesian kids have like, like expat dads or whatever, so they've grown up with rugby. But we go abroad to Singapore, KL, and Bangkok as well, and they've had junior rugby programs in development for many years. So we're seeing uh, a really high level of performance with those children. But that just elevates us. So our kids now see, oh, wow, if they're playing like that, I can play like that. And our coaches take a lot from that as well in, as a means to build them up. There you awesome go. Stuff. Yeah. Well, I can see you're itching to get on this bouncy castle to my left, so I'm going to let you shoot off. All Kyle, right. it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much yeah. Cheers. I've been at this tournament itself for the last 13 years. Um, but 10 years ago, me and a bunch of mates that came out of the old ISI club, um, we got together and we founded Indonesian Rugby. Uh, next week we celebrate our 10th anniversary. Indonesian rugby is about obviously getting Indonesians to play rugby. The sport was an expat sport, 90% of us that played were expats. But starting 10 years ago, Indonesian involvement's increased and if you look out there today, probably 90% plus of local participants are all Indonesians. Uh, just one more question, you've been in Jakarta a fair few years now. How can I get myself a tan like yours? <laughs> sunbeds. Sunbeds. Uh, no, I bought, I bought a sunbed three years ago and I basically lie on the sunbed uh, probably at least four times a week. That's, that's all, you, all you not, have to do. You're not out moonbathing all year round? No? A little bit of moonbathing as well, but yeah, sunbeds are the way to go. So, in all seriousness, what's going on after afterwards? I, I, uh, maybe we'll leave that off camera. You know, what goes on tour stays on tour and usually a couple of people will leave some players behind as well. <laughs> yeah. So. We'll leave that somewhere well, else. that's yeah. largely not a bad thing. Anyways, Gareth, thank you very much. No it's problem. a pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming down. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Oh. Yo, I'm, so I'm here with the captain of the Royal Malaysian Police Team. Winners of the Cup competition. How do you feel, bro? I feel so great today and so thankful for my uh, God. Uh, I feel thankful for my teammate. Even I'm not well prepared, but for this first time I came here and we just make it today. Great stuff. Well, it was a hell of a game. How are you feeling right now? You tired? Ah, of course. I'm not too fit for a tough game today. Starting early morning until now. Too tired. Good stuff. So what about celebrations? Where to now? Um, firstly, we will bring my cup yeah. and then we, ha we will have a great dinner and for sure we will make some celebration. It's been a hell of a day down here at the Jakarta Tens. It's been a long day for us at the Rugby Asia Channel. We've had sunshine, we've had rain, we've had everything. So congratulations for all those that took part and for all those that won. It's just great to see so many of the local Indonesian community just getting involved with the rugby. So before we go, we've got one thing to say. Boozer, congratulations on your wedding. Many happy returns. And that's it for the Rugby Asia Channel. Over and out. Peace. So um, just while we're off camera here, um, I saw you looking over there at me. It is me, Ed Ralston. Um, so I'm a pretty big deal, obviously. Uh, one of the presenters for Rugby Asia Channel. So how about we say, you know, when all of this wraps up, you and I go for a little drink, no? Huh? No. 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 Why? Yes, no. Fancy going and grab a drink after this? No. Huh? No. No.